Hey folks, this is Danny with Stuff I Kind of Care About, and I'm in quarantine, so I'm going to keep making all the weird things. I've got my new setup, which I'm still really excited about. It's working out really well. Uh, so I'm going to use it today to make a shotgun scabbard. Now, I don't have any reference other than this thing, which is for a pistol grip shotgun, but I've tried it out on, uh, I've got a side-by-side -side coach gun that I want a scabbard for. And I've checked it, and it's about right. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using this to kind of trace out a, a very simple pattern. And then I'm going to cut it out, and we'll go from there. I'll keep talking you through what I'm doing while I'm doing it. But the purpose of this is really... Oh, yeah. The purpose of this is really just to get as close as I can... And I'll kind of tidy everything up once I get there. Okay, so I've got the base outline of what the material needs to be. So I don't need that anymore. And I'm just using a Sharpie tracing onto brown craft paper. You can see these tape marks here. Uh, this is actually the paper that comes rolled up around my big sides of leather that I get. And I just don't really feel like having to... I still need this. I'm an idiot. Don't mind me. I don't really feel like having to waste paper. So why not use this stuff and see what we can make out of it. So I'm going to trim this down to just a little bit more reasonable of a piece to use. And I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks that I do to kind of make this whole job easier. So I'm not really worried about being too precise with this. This is a, this is a, a pretend pattern. I just want to make sure that this works, that this is going to do what I want it to. And so I'm going to get it close and then we can kind of hone this pattern in a little bit more as we need to. I'm using just a normal folding box cutter. I don't do a lot of complicated leather work and so I don't have a lot of the tools that some people have. But this is actually a really good way to see if you want to get into leather work. Um, see what you can actually accomplish with it without breaking your bank, which is really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of fold this in half. And there's two points that I'm really going to worry about. I'm going to worry about this end down here and make sure that this is kind of close. And then I'm going to pull all the slack out and I'm going to worry about this end up here and make sure that this one's good. And then we're just going to fold this thing in half. Trying to kind of maintain what we've already got done. And that's generally it. Now... We're going to see how this looks on this piece. So it definitely fits. This is going to be able to slide in a little bit more. And now I want to think about exactly what I want this scabbard to do. Do I want all of this to go into it? Do I want it to cut shorter? The balance point of this is right forward of the hammers, and so I could conceivably have it stop right at the trigger guard and make it a narrower scabbard and let the weight of this thing hold it down, but then I have to make sure that I'm, I'm really securing it wherever I'm securing it right at the top. So these are all questions I have to ask myself, and that being said... If I want to do that, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to lay this up on this center seam and kind of try to split the difference. These right here are quilting clips and they are your best friend when it comes to pattern making. I know what I'm going to do. How long is this? This is about, it's about 10 inches. I'm going to take this off of the top and we'll go from there. I'm also not at all a professional at any of this. Just massive disclaimer to anyone watching. So you're going to see me kind of try to puzzle through this a good bit. Um, this isn't something that I'm like, ridiculously good at or any of that I'm just learning and enjoying it while I go we're gonna try taking nine inches off and the reason I use this yardstick is because I can get it to line up with both ends of this cutting mat and that way I can actually have a good measurement So I've cut it a little bit short, to be honest with you. I probably want a good inch at that end. So I need to go back. I'm going to have to go back and add an inch onto this. So if you're making one of these, don't do what I did and take off that inch. If you don't have an actual scabbard, just take a rectangular piece of paper, pull it up, clip it in place, and just kind of trim down little by little and you'll get there eventually. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna wanna do is kinda follow this curve. So I know you can't see what I'm doing, I'm about to show you the paper in a second. Show you just how rough it looks. And I'm also going to be leaving this end open so that the whole thing can just slide through. So I may not need to actually make this any longer. Yeah, I think I'm just going to leave it as is. So now I can actually take my clips off. And this is the part where we can start f like finessing this pattern a little bit. I'm going to put this to the side because we don't need that right now. And now you can see I've got some very rough marks on there. Uh, I have a halfway line, which is very nice. So all I have to do is take this and decide how this is going to look and do it a little bit more precisely. And for that, I'm just going to grab a different color Sharpie. And I think we're going to try following that gold Sharpie line or bronze or whatever it is and see if that can actually do what we need it to do. So now that I've got this, we're just going to try it. If it messes up, I'll start over from the, the beginning again. So the first thing is, if you notice, these ends don't quite match up. So we're going to trim these to fit each other. So now we have a good starting point. And then we're just going to keep on moving. So now we've got this. And I'm kind of sad because I don't have any brown leather that's got enough stand up to make this scabbard out of. I really wanted to use this stuff, but as you can see, it's pretty floppy and it's just not going to do what I want it to do. So I'm going to have to use some bridal leather. This is 
leather that I got from a good friend of mine who used to do a lot of leather work, and he doesn't do quite as much anymore. Um, so this is thick and hearty stuff. And I'm very excited to get into it. It's got some cut marks, um, a few blemishes, some fat wrinkles and stuff like that. And I'm totally fine with that. This is a scabbard for a shotgun. It's not like it's going to be the cleanest piece in the world. And so it's not a problem if we have something that's a little rough looking. So I'm going to go grab a few weights to weigh this down so that I can actually draw out the pattern onto here with my all, with my awl, and then I'll show you what we're doing next. All right, so I've rearranged this so that it's a little closer to me so that when I trace it and cut it, I'm not leaning over my whole work table. I also have this whole thing rolled out because if I don't, the roll kind of covers up what I'm doing, but you don't care about that stuff. You just want me to get to doing some work. We're going to leave the back side of this alone. We're just going to do a quick edging on this top side. Now, if you don't have an edging tool, don't worry about doing this step. It's really not going to make much of a difference in the finished product. It's just something that I'm wanting to do for the fun of the project. Now I have to figure out what I'm going to do for a strap. Because that is important. So I'm going to take a break. I'm going to think about that. And I'm going to come back and hang out with all of you fine folks in a minute. And let you know what I'm deciding to do for this strap. Be right back. Okay, so I made a decision as to how this is going to be hung. It's going to be set so that it can be on the left hand side. And we'll get to that part in a minute. But for now, what I'm going to be doing is measuring this out as best I can to give myself a little pad. And we'll get to drawing in a minute. So I'm just giving myself two straight edges to measure off of. I know that this is going to be like this. So really, I only have about three inches to work with for this pad. So thankfully my cutting mat is incremented in half inches. For those of you using metric, I apologize. I'm trying to convert myself to it, but when I'm working quickly for a video, I just go with Imperial because it tends to make my life easier. When I'm doing private projects just for me, I'm doing metric because I think it's a better system. Everybody that doesn't agree with me is welcome to disagree. So I'm just doing a quick three by three square. And that's all I really need at the moment. And then I'm going to test out corners on this thing, and I've got a challenge coin I like to use for some tighter corners. I use pennies and quarters and nickels for corners as well. Uh, if you're doing a larger corner and you don't want it to be as abrupt, I would recommend if you're doing leather work, you probably have got a tin of saddle soap hanging around. The lid of a saddle soap tin works really well. But you can use anything. You can use a pint glass upside down or right side up, depending on how tight you want this corner to be. And I hope you can see I've got some lines drawn there. And if you can't see that clearly, 
You have my apologies now and forevermore. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of this bridle leather. I do not need much. So what we're going to do is just figure out about what I'm going to need. And then we'll cut this down to a more reasonable working size. Set that to the side. And get my awl back out. We're going to trace this bad boy out. And if you don't trace it purpose, uh, <laughs> words, if you don't trace this perfectly, it's not a big problem. Uh, err on the side of outside of your template. If you dig into your template, you'll leave some scars. But if you go too big, you can always trim it down a little bit. Just pare it down with your razor blade. Okay, so I've got this little piece and what I want to do is I want to set it up to be able to diagonal carry so if this is oriented like this I'm gonna need two lines here so that I can just pop a belt through it and hopefully it'll work so I'm gonna line this thing up as best I can And then we're just going to go for it. Why not? So it's not the most precise thing ever. But it's there. And I'm going to grab my hole punch. And this is a handy trick. If you don't have a punch that will do ovals, just use a hole punch. Punch the two ends and then use your box cutter to cut lines between them. And you'll get a pretty decent one. And then we're going to use this ruler to make a, another set of lines. And this one, do not rush. Make sure you have a sharp blade. Just take it slow, do it pass by pass. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go almost all the way to the other end and then I'm going to come back from the other end because I don't want the knife to slip in that hole and cut out of the leather. I did that the first time I ever made one of these things. I just cut all the way through and I ended up cutting out the other end. So, I would love if you could learn from my mistakes. The moral of the story is don't do the dumb stuff that Danny does. Be a little bit more intelligent about how you do things, please. So now we have this. And this will take a belt. And you can just loosen it up a little bit. Um, it's going to be tight, but that's totally acceptable. Now what we have to do is we have to figure out how we're going to mount this onto this. And also how we're going to sew this up. Um, if this is getting sewn up so that this seam is the bottom, then I want this patch here on this inside. And I want it going this way so that it can hang coming out like this because if I put it this way it's going to hang backwards so I got to do it like this and that's going to be awesome um I should have yes I have a junk sharpie that I use to do a lot of really ridiculous stuff with and I'm just going to black down these edges with it and then I'll use my burnishing tool to kind of smooth everything out. I don't have any edge dye. 
And I'd probably be doing this even if I did have some, just because you don't need edge dye to make stuff look good. So this is gonna be awesome. And yes, I'm gonna be doing this all the way around this one too. So we're gonna turn off the video and I'm gonna do all of this and I'll get you back when I'm sorting some stuff out.